be a good hit for me. Good hit, and that's a nine iron you said? Yeah. Do you know how about how far that goes in Park City? Um, I usually hit my nine iron about 125. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that one on the track man carried 110 and went to 124. Okay, there you go. So it's about right, yeah. Uh, okay. And, uh, I feel like, relatively speaking, I, I hit short for being a relatively fit mm -hmm. uh, person. That was okay, but... Yeah. Okay. Let me see uh let me see a couple seven irons. Okay. And then I'd like to see some drivers. Okay. Uh, you feel like you're ready for seven is it sevens and drivers? Yeah, 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 that's fine. I'll start the with my longer. Okay. Probably my uh my tires club and probably my uh hybrids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a good hit. So what? What do you think you have to do better? Um, What's your normal? That one. I don't know. I may. I, I didn't hit it in the middle of the club for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so what would what would your past instructors say? You probably uh, should do better. Uh, he's trying <coughs> to get me to relax and in the app and just try to it's a nice smooth swing. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was a little thin good. there, yeah. yeah. A good one. Let's see how far that one went. How far would that usually go? Uh, usually 145. Yeah, so it carried 129, went to 147. Okay. Yeah. Let's hit a couple drivers. So you requested irons and putting today, yeah. but yeah. are you satisfied then with driving or? Um, my driving has improved significantly. Okay. Uh, but uh, I'm still. Had a big slice. Uh, yeah, a slice, and uh, Tim was trying to get me to kind of overcompensate, I guess. Mm -hmm. and try to hit a draw. Yeah. Okay. Let's hit one. See that uh, that white flag way on the left of the range, kind of yeah, down there. Let's aim. Let's aim down there. And what would be a good driving distance, you think? probably 220 something like that okay i don't and that's part of my issue for again i think i'm in very good shape mm. i'm not a great athlete but i'm i think i'm relatively strong yeah i don't think i hit the it just seems like i should hit the ball further than i do yeah yeah you're what we call sneaky short <laughs> sneaky long is like someone like me who's smaller and bombs it and you're stronger than i am i'm sure and you're not hitting it as far as you should not good mm -hmm. yeah hit one more like that hopefully i can do better than that <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i know what you mean <laughs> That was more solid. Yeah, that would be a really good hit for me. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't know how, how far did that one go. Uh, 221. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, cool. Uh, I got my <coughs> numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right, well, let's do a couple of tests, and uh, I'm going to check check sure. your athleticism. Take okay. that stick for me. I'll take your driver. Okay. All right. So in your left hand, uh -huh. um, just raise it up and swish it through the air for me. Swish it like, like we were going to go over here and mow down these bushes. You're going to chop everything down, right? Yep. In fact, let's go over there and see what we can create. Okay. Now you would... You would, if I said, all right, Gary, you, I need you to mow me down some grass, you're probably going to swing at it forehand with your left hand. You're probably going to pull that stick up this way and swing in that direction, I would assume, because we're not playing golf. We're saying right. you're going to chop yeah, chop all this anything, down. I probably, I actually would, have done that, would you have so gone backhanded? Right, that's just because, probably because I had yeah. a, a golf club in my hand. Right, right, right. So that's probably more natural yeah. for you to create some create some speed right yeah. let's do it do it fast whip it through there as fast as you can there you go good okay now flip it and go backhanded for me show me the backhanded version yeah have you played any tennis or anything I have. <clears throat> left handed left tennis Rod Laver was my guy. <laughs> perfect there you go. All right. So here's the problem is that your golf swing is resembling some tennis swing. Okay. But the problem is it's resembling a backhand in tennis, which is not nearly as powerful as a forehand in tennis, right? Okay. Yeah. So what we have to do is we have to figure out how do we get that left hand to actually work properly because it's not. Okay. I mean, you should be hitting the ball 50 yards further on a driver and at least 10 to 20 yards, probably 20 yards further on an iron. Okay. okay. Um, so we're going to try to get you there today, but the way you're going to do that is to, we got to free up that left arm somehow. Okay. Um, naturally, as you come back, you're tucking that right arm in that, that left arm in low across your hip as if you're getting ready to hit like a top spin backhand. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, we don't want that. Okay. Right. What we want, if anything, um, is a high handed up here, bent left arm, just swish. Just create a okay. lot of a lot more speed so don't worry about the the into out path stuff that you were working on uh -huh. um um your setup th these things aren't helping you okay. um you're <clears throat> there's a much more efficient way to create the path that we want to get the face to square okay but we have to do that by getting your left hand to actually do its job properly okay. right because i don't know that i don't know that anybody's shown you what i'm about to show you and i don't know that you know, even just naturally, maybe even when you first started, you might have done some of this. Let's get after these weeds a few more times, but okay. let's do it with that backhanded left hand. Backhand? Backhanded, yeah. Okay. So pull it up. So don't pull it in here. Okay. There's no power there. Okay. Right? Pull it up there. Okay. Right? So your job is not to create a swing. Uh -huh. Your job is to smash weeds. There you go. There you go. Good, right? Now pick it up and just stop up there. Stop? Yeah, well, just with left hand, yep. Lift it up. No, in your backswing. Just, oh. Yep. Yeah, there you go. All right, so this is what we want. I want to see this up here, up here under your chin. Powerful. Because from here, you can really create speed. Okay. From down in here, you can't create any speed. Okay. Or not enough speed. All right. So pull it up like you're going to tuck your... Uh, left shoulder under your chin, pull it up as high as you can there, and then you're going to backhand it. There you go. So basically a backhand is a tricep extension, right? So you say, you know, when you're working out at the gym, if you got the cable cross and you got the ropes and you grab a hold of it and you pull it in front of you and you, you're kind of doing this kind of deal, right? So you're working on the triceps because you're extending the triceps. For you, a lot of your power is going to come from a left-handed tricep extension. So go ahead and pull it up behind you. That's a bent left arm. And then extend your arm and whip it through. Okay. Yep, there you go. So that's where the speed comes from. Okay. Mm-hmm. Really good. Yep. Good. Now, some of the rotation that you make in your hips and shoulders, that just facilitates this left arm. Okay. So go ahead and do your setup again, right? Don't think of a golf swing. Think okay. of weed whacking. Now, if I said, I need you to now get after one of these thicker bushes, uh -huh. 
what you would do is you would turn your shoulders further and then you would kind of get your shoulders and your hips into it. So yeah. pretend like you're going to chop that, that weed down there. Yeah, there you go. That's much better. Right? So what I want you to think of left-handed is you've just won Wimbledon, mm -hmm. right? But you're going to hit a, you're going to pick the ball up, maybe not Wimbledon because they might not like you, but you're going to throw the ball up with your right hand and you're going to backhand and you're just going to wail that ball completely out of the stadium. Okay. But it's going to be a backhanded hoist, okay. right? Do it again. We'll try that there and then wham, right? That's what you're going to do. Okay. So now show me your right hand only. <clears throat> okay. Right there. There you go. So it's got good speed too. So the good news is, is that your right hand isn't going to slow your left hand down. When golfers are a little bit more dominant with one hand versus another, uh -huh. their strongest hand is so much stronger than their weak that the weak slows it down. Okay. And we don't want that. So we want both hands. So give me some right-handed swishes as if we're weed whacking. There you go. That's got good speed. Now let's do the left hand. There you go. Okay. Now come on up here. Okay. And what I'm going to have you do is take your driver now and okay. put it in, uh, hold it at this end. Okay. And left hand only. Okay. Now do, do some big swishes. Yep. Good. Now we're just going to make sure that club starts making its way a little closer to the ground, but don't pull it in here. So you pulled it in. Yeah. We don't want that. So in order to have power, you have to go up to down to up, not down to down to up. I, I don't want to, I don't want a flat cross court shot or down the line shot. I don't want a flat inside back end down the line. I want you to wind up and turn your shoulders and drill the ball back across the net level. There you go. Okay, now let's put your right hand on there too. Let's get both hands doing this. Faster. Faster. Good. Now you hear it swish? Do you hear the sound? Uh -huh. Do it again and listen for it. Where's the sound fastest? Right. To me it's... From here coming through like to that. here okay. after the ball. Uh -huh. We don't want that. We want the swish to be speeding before it gets to the ball. Okay. Right? So if I if we make a make a quadrant, uh -huh. right? Cut you in half this way. Right. Cut you in half this way. Your speed zone is this quadrant, not after the ball. We want it before you get to the ball. Okay. So do those swishes. And it's got to start here. Okay. And it's got to accelerate through this corner. Both hands. Nope, it was over there. It was over here. You can hear it, right? Make that sound over here. There you go. What do you got to do? You got to fling it. Right? You can't drag the club through there. You have to chuck it through there. Okay. Nope, I'm still hearing it over here. Take this in your, take this in your uh, right hand. Okay. And make the sound over here. That's what I want to see. Nope, that moved over here. Back over here. That's what I want to see. Now do it with your left hand. Nope, that was over here. Do it over here. Nope, that was over here. Do it over here. That's better. That's better. So what do you have to do? You have to break your wrist. You have to throw the club. You have to flick it back here. You can't wait till you get to there. Okay. All right, so now let's go back to this one again. Grab the club head end. Uh -huh. Now don't just casually hold it with the right hand. The right hand is the lower lever on the club. You need to push with it. You need to chuck it. It doesn't just go along for the ride. It's a two-handed forehand. Uh -huh. yeah, pull it way back and fling it through uh -huh. this. That's but much better. Do that again. That's it. Get it started up here, though. Yeah, much better. Way up here. That, that's your best swing of your life right there. One more, go up here, way up here. That's it, do it again. Now you gotta fling it, don't drag it. So you're holding way too loose with your hands, right? Okay. You're, you're, you're dragging the weight of the club. I gotta get you to get angry here and chuck it. There, that's it. 
All right, now we're gonna put the ball in the way of that. Okay. So do a, do your regular grip on the on that end of the club, and do a couple of practice swings, and get that club over here, flinging. There you go. Chuck it hard. That's it. Do it again. Nope, harder back here. That's it. There you go, right? So you are strong. And your hands move fast. You, you've never done this before, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> because you've never done this before, there's a little doubt, number one. You're sure. doubting what I'm telling you. No, which, no, no. I, <laughs> which we, I trust you. I just, uh, it feels out of control. There you go, right? So here's the problem with control. We, we play this game where we chip it around the course, we don't have any power, and then we, honestly, it's not very satisfying, right? Right. If you do what you're doing now, your ball's gonna jump from 220 to 260 like that. Would be so much nicer to hit it 260 instead of 220, right? Absolutely. Right, so let's do it, and let's hope that we get good collision. Absolutely. And if we don't get good collision on the first one, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna do it again until we get some form of good collision. Okay. But whether we get good collision or not, the TrackMan radar is gonna tell me your club head speed. Okay. Your club head speed currently with a driver is 86. Okay. It's gonna jump to 96. That's 30 more yards. Okay. So we just gotta figure that out, right? right? But you have to be brave enough to actually wing that club and chuck it through that space and not guide it, right? So do your setup. Right? A little apprehension, which is natural. Mm -hmm. I want you to get crazy, wild, and throw it as hard as you can. Let's see what happens. There you go, right? Now we got more in the tank than that, but that just jumped from 86 to 90. Mm -hmm. So four miles an hour just gave you another 15 more yards just from doing that. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that when we stand there, we can't stand there in this, uh, like, in, tucked in position, right? Right. You've been chucking that club now for 30, 40 swings over here. Uh -huh. It's going to get further from your body because centrifugal force is going to pull that club out. So you have to stand in a position where you're going to embrace that. You're going to let that happen. Okay. So go ahead and do your setup. All right. Now, if you chuck this thing properly... Uh -huh. That club's going to go out there. Okay. It's going to be that much further away. So back up. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and then give me a big, big, fast swing. Big wind up and throw it hard with both hands. All right, hit it off the toe a little. Yeah. Let's try again. That's fine. That would be expected because you're so used to standing so close to the ball, right? So give me a little bit of a reach. Get a big wind up, and then it's a two, double handed, two handed, early, early throw. That was a late throw. So, your swish speed, if we'd heard it, uh -huh. would have been over here. Okay. Yep. And you can come in just a little closer than what you're doing there. Just a little closer. So, do a couple practice swings. Let's get that fast throw. Better. Yeah, you can't you can't try to create speed here. Okay. You have to create speed here, right? So there's a bag stand back here. Mm -hmm. If I said, Gary, I don't need a bag stand, I need firewood. Right? Pull your axe up. Now look back here. How would you break that? You would have to hammer it in that location. You couldn't wait, right? So let's try that. Pull it back and then chuck it in that location. There you go. Yep, there you go. Now that you're figuring out this timing part, let it go all the way. So once you, there you go. Once you start the throw, let's get it going all the way around. That's much better. A couple more, there you go. So we're going from high to low to high and high to fast to fast all the way. Let's try it with the ball. Yep, big high hands, give me some speed. 
Um, we missed the bottom of the arc a little bit. Let's see if you got your speed number on that one. Move the radar here a little bit. Yeah, big high hands. Yeah, big fast swish. That's better. Mm -hmm. That was 92 miles an hour. Big high hands, big fast early throw, whip it all the way through that space. Don't guide it. Chuck it hard with both hands. Much better, much better. All right, that was 95 miles an hour. So gone up nine miles an hour. <clears throat> that drive went 240. And the only reason why it's not going 260 yet is because it's not going high enough. But that's going to be a function of changing the club head angle, not changing your swing. So I want you to go for it again. Get that 95, 96 miles an hour. Fast, fast throw. There you go. Good. Now what you're also finding is that it's actually starting to draw a little bit. Right? Because what happens is when you release energy late and you drag the club and you guide it, it fades all day long. When you fling it and chuck it through this arc, that arc swoops around, collects the ball, and produces a draw. So instead of worrying about path, mm -hmm. like you said two things and I cringed. You said, I'm going to just try to swing my path more from inside and swing easy. Right? We don't want to swing easy because you lose all your distance. And then the truth of it is, too, if you guide it down that path, it's not going to help. You have to fling it and chuck it down that path to make it happen. Okay. So that was a 250-yard drive there at 95, right? So you got 95 miles an hour club head speed, and then you got a 250-yard drive. And it still wasn't optimal as far as the ball flight and all that kind of stuff is concerned. But that's 30 yards further than the 220 that we were getting. And that's because our club head speed has gone up nine miles an hour, and I still think there's a couple more miles an hour in there. Okay. So let's try again. All right, you should be feeling a little more encouraged that this, yeah. this experiment's going to work because what out of control makes you do is guide it. There you go. Best drive of your life right there. When we think we get out of control, we guide it. When we guide it, it actually goes crooked. So it's the guiding that's causing your miss hits. Okay. Right? That was a 265 yard drive. Wow. All right. That ball carried 221, which was the full distance of your first couple drives, 221. Okay. Now you're going 264, so we've gone up 40. Five yards, basically, right? And that was really well struck, and you got that out of a 93.5 mile an hour swing. So you struck it better, swinging faster, uh -huh. than you did earlier swinging slower. Right. And what, what do you recommend, like, if I'm actually going out and playing? Yeah. Do I do? 100%. Okay. Why would you want to be in the native grass 220 when you can be in the native grass 260? <laughs> okay. yeah. There you go. So give me a shoulder turn. Wind that thing up because the bigger your shoulder turn is in the backswing, the easier it is to smash on I this. I feel like I dip my shoulder rather than turn. I don't know. Yeah, a, dipping, a little dip of the shoulder is not bad. But the thing is we got to rotate and lift your arms up. Right? Not like the tennis backswing right. backhand where it's low across your hip. So let's get a big, big rotation in the shoulder and then an early throw, double-handed throw. There you go. That's better. Yep, 95 on the club speed there. Let me see your driver real quick. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick look inside of this. But while I do that... What I want you to do is take out that nine iron and you're going to do the same swing. Because what I'm looking at here, Gary, especially in Park City, what we need is height. 
because our uh, the air is so thin and when we have um, thin air we need higher rates of spin and higher launches to keep the ball in the air okay so yeah, let's hit a couple nine irons kind of right in this area maybe right here and the track man will get right. us a reading there Right, big. Give me a couple practice swings first, because you're gonna do the big double-handed throw faster. It's gonna feel out of control, right? But we already know that out of control not only goes further, but it actually goes straighter. So what I'm doing on your PXG drivers, I'm gonna turn it to the big plus. Okay. It was on the standard 10.5. The big plus is going to get me closer to like 12 degrees, okay. which is what we need. Okay. And it also gives a little bit of a draw bias to the setting, which is helpful to, to create that draw shape. So, yeah, give me the big throws, big hard throws. There you go. So we got to get that throw to happen in the chopping wood zone not yeah in there not after the ball there you go go for it now these need to hit the ground by the way so as you're doing your practice throws you want to be thumping that okay that turf i'm not getting there <laughs> no so that's that's verticalness right so if you lift it up steeper you can hit the ground easier Okay. Yeah, so throw it on a vertical. There you go. Throw it on a vertical angle. You say vertical meaning? Like straight chopping okay. wood. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Much better. You might hit this 170 in the air at that speed. If you can commit to that, that ball will go from one what was it 110 in the air or 115 in the air uh -huh. 125 total i think is what you said yeah, right. you might hit this 160 in the air right now that first swing if you do it like that yeah just go for it <laughs> see that i mean it was a little thin but let's see like your, your club head speed was almost 80 miles an hour or basically it was 80 miles an hour yeah, it went 135 in the air. <clears throat> Normally it went 125 after the roll. Right, okay. And that, was, that wasn't even sweet spot, right? You missed yeah, that. Yeah, I missed it. Yeah, so let's get the speed going again. Give it a harder throw into the ground. Yeah, that was good. Got a little turf. Yep, 78 on the club speed. So as you're doing this, now that you're able to be more aggressive into the ground with your throw, uh -huh. you can back up just like we did with the driver. Give yourself a little bit more kind of stance distance from the ball and you can embrace this hard throw. Yeah, so that was the, remember earlier in the lesson when you were describing your swing, you're like, I don't really want to finish low over here. Uh -huh. I want to finish high up here. That one you finished low. Okay. Well, you finish low because you're used to, it's our brain loves symmetry. Sure. Your brain used to go low in the backswing uh -huh. and that's why it would go low in the follow through. Uh -huh. Now that it's going high in the backswing, it's going to more naturally go high in the follow through. Okay. That one you kind of reroute it a little. Right. So as you do your hammer down on this side, uh -huh. embrace that high finish on the other side. Okay. Do a couple practice swings. There you go, right? So you're gonna chuck it hard here, and then because of all the effort that you put in on this side, uh -huh. it goes there, right? So picture a kid at the park, and I come along and I'm like, oh, you want me to push you on the swing? And I give them a hard shove down over here. Where do they go? All the way up there. Okay. If you allow the club to just go, that's what's gonna happen. Your follow through will finish nice and high. Yep, so you throw it down to finish up. There you go. 
You don't have to guide it up. The momentum will take you up. There you go. All right, so chuck it hard right through this ball, and we'll see. We'll get our 160 here today. Yeah, real high. Give it an aggressive throw. Much better. Even that wasn't sweet spot. Yeah, that was a 130 carry. So once we catch it solid, it's probably going to go in that 150 range. Finished a little low on that one. So you finish low because your throw was kind of low. You have to throw it down more vertically. I'll be going. Should I throw it? I don't know. My... Yeah, yeah. So lift it up in the air. Sure. Look, look back here at my hand. This is where you're chopping. Kind of down in this area. And then the momentum will swing down under and collect so the it's ball. Not over here. No, it's not. It's, up it's way up there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what you were doing in the past is you were trying to solve your path issue uh -huh. by handcuffing your entire golf swing and tucking it in, tucking it in, tucking it in. Uh -huh. That's not what gives us an in-to-out path. What gives us an in-to-out path is this aggressive throw, right? Okay. If you throw back here toward that bag stand or back past your right leg, you can't come over the top. It's not possible. It eliminates the slice like that. The reason why you slice is because from your setup, you were used to throwing it over there at your golf bag. But if now, if you throw it over here, you can't go over, you can only go under. See how that works? So it's not the guiding of the club that makes this happen. It's the throwing of the club that makes it happen. So do a backswing and stop and we'll just clarify, right? So now you picture like, here's the seam of your pants. Uh -huh. There's a, a line straight back, kind of a couple feet over here. If right. you throw the club in this direction, wham, uh -huh. it can't go over the top. Right. It's impossible. Uh -huh. Okay. And then, yeah, yeah, then it flings through, and guess where you finish? Okay. Way up high. Right. Okay. So if you throw it down in that direction, like pushing a kid on a swing, you can only come from the inside, and you can only finish high. So the two things that you've been looking for, this is how you get it. You chuck it down over there and then go that way. All right, so, what was, so what's happened over the time is you've been trying to change your path right. from over the top to into out. Well, you did it by manipulating and guiding it, which made you lose all your club head speed. Okay. Now you did get better right. because an over-the-top swing is just not as good as an in-to-out swing. Problem was you lost all your speed, so you weren't able to right. hit it like you know you should. And that's why I said you're sneaky short, but not anymore. All right, so big, big turn, big aggressive throw kind of down but past your right leg. So much better. And if you keep doing that, we're going to get higher draws. We're going to get high draws instead of low fades. That one carried 131 and went to 154. Yep. And we still haven't really caught the sweet spot yet. Yeah, we yep. And part of that is the lie angle of the club, which I may do an adjustment on, but um, for now, I just want, to just want you to keep embracing this throwing motion. And then just uh, put them to this little divot. Let's uh, put them. Yeah. Sorry, closer to. You're fine. Sorry. Right, right there should be yeah. better. Yeah. Now you're aiming this club out at that purple flag instead of the second white flag. <laughs> See the difference? Right. That second white flag is 110. That's where you were hitting it earlier. Oh, okay. Now you're flying it to the purple flag. Mm -hmm. So that one there, you, you finished low uh -huh. because you threw more toward the track man. Had you thrown more here, uh -huh. you would have finished high. Okay. How's your body doing? Arms and wrists and everything are feeling yeah. okay? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's new. Yes. So, yeah, big, big high backswing, big early aggressive throw back here. 
Uh -huh. So we just got to throw it. I'm going to put a put a stick back here. So set another ball in that space. Off to the next one. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so big, big backswing. And then look back here at this stick. All right, so do your wind up and stop. Keep going all the way, all the way, all the way. You're chopping wood, right? I'm like, Gary, I, I need firewood today. So you're going to throw it as hard as you can in this area. And then it's going to swoop through and collect the ball. Yeah. Much better. Much better. Yeah, 124 carry, 157 total. And that's because it was coming out kind of low. When this goes high, we'll get all the distance we need. It's getting there. Mm -hmm. Still not getting high enough? No, nope, not quite high enough and not throwing down enough. But that got more height. That was a 131 carry. All right, we haven't. We only got one divot, and it was a little bit more on accident. Let's see if we can be more aggressive throwing it down into the ground. There you go. See the height on that one? Yeah. Yep. Clubhead speed was right at 77. Uh, carry distance was 135 on that one. So we just got to get the height now. With what, the speed. What should the club head speed for this club be? For me? Um, well, the, that's your nine, right? Yeah. So normally I, when I do this, let's do it with a seven. Uh -huh. Right? So you were 95 on a... Um, My driver. On a driver. Yeah. So... So, yeah, so that's interesting. So if I see a, a really good jump in speed, I get 20 miles an hour difference. A minimum jump in speed is 10. And that's usually from the 7 to the driver, not in reverse. So I'm, I'm willing to bet you're going to hit 80 miles an hour at least, right? And so far on the driver, we've got 95. So that tells me that if you can get 80 on a 7, you should be able to get 100 on your driver. And based on these swings so far, you swinging a 9-iron at 77, you should hit 80 pretty easily on a 7-iron. Let's give it that Let's give it that full throw. Yep, just tucked it in a little bit. Club head speed was 79, so that's close to what we were talking about. There you go. Good, All right? So based on your posture and your setup, I'm definitely going to adjust your lie angles of your clubs a little bit. Reach back and give me a hard throw. That's all right. So let's take a look at that club. Let's um, come on over here with me. I got a loft and lie machine on the back of my cart, and I will use your 7-iron as, uh, as your guinea pig okay. club. So. Here, what I'll have you do is just hold the recording it, so just watch your fingers in front of the camera there. So this is me documenting life change. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, for me, I, 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 this is what I do. Right? Yeah, so this I is could, awesome. I could tell that when you stood up here and you started making these swings that there was a lot more in you than what you were giving me. Uh -huh. um, and then my goal is just to get it out, right? Now there is a, a learning curve. And part of it is based on logic and rational thinking because you're like, how do I do this on the course? Right, yeah. You just do. You just go buy a bunch of cheap balls and you go do it. Okay. All right, so I just pushed it upright. There you go. All right. Let's go try it again. So what was happening in part of your swing there, your setup, this is a this is going to be a little bit of um, evolution over time because I may end up bending these back a little bit. But to start with today, we've got to match you up better. Yeah, probably right there. We've got to match you up better. And the lie angle was not appropriate for your swing plane. 
So now when you set the club on the ground, you're gonna see how it sits flatter, easier. Yeah. Whereas before it was almost sitting a little kind of toe down. Right. So make a couple big practice swings for me and pick it back and give it a hard throw. All of these things are designed to help the ball go straighter for you. Nice finish, I like that one. There you go. Now, the length of the backswing isn't as important as just the snap that you get, right? So now you know, oh, I'm supposed to be pushing here. And I think of it like if we had a kid on a swing, if that kid came up this high, I could give him a little bit more of a gentle shove and they'd reach the same height, maybe the same velocity. Right. If they came back a little ways here and then I just shoved them a little harder, that's your own timing. But the main thing is now you're learning is this push happens here. Push doesn't happen at the ball or after the ball, it happens here. And it's a double-handed push, right? We're not just pushing our left hand or pulling, we're throwing both. We're, yep, give it a shot. Hey, I like it, nice. Now do you see the ball flight? At drawing, right? Definitely drawing. So it went left. So now what we have to learn to do is just swing more out. So that's throw it better. The good news is, is your grip is already in a pretty strong position. But that shot there, Gary, flew 155 and went to 184. <laughs> so throw it down and out. Ooh, that was so close. So close. You got it. Speed is good. 78. Like, I, th I, I think around 80 is probably a good number for you. Yeah, back up just a little bit for me. So, yeah, there you go. Reach your arms out a little. I don't want you to worry about hitting the ground. I need you to have room to do that. So throw it down. Yep, so let's, let's work on it a little, right? So you're getting close. So I'll give you a little coaching advice here. So take take your club and put it in your grip. You can swing up to the top and stop. Now, this is primarily what we've been talking about. Taking these arms and like chucking it. Throw, throw, right? We're throw, throw, throw. Okay. We're not getting to the ground. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to drop the shoulder as we throw. So we blend it, we go shoulder throw, shoulder throw, make sense? Because now if you do a little crunch, a little side bend on the right side, uh -huh. now you should be able to reach the ground a lot easier. Okay. So do a couple practice swings and see if you can give me a little throw crunch at the same time, yeah. Yeah, there, we got the ground easier, yeah. Nice, I like it. There you go. Now if we really went to chop wood, you would want to use some of your core to hammer that back down, right? So we would want to, yeah, we want to pull that, pull and throw, kind of a blended movement. Yeah, much better. There you go. Yeah, perfect. Now we're catching the turf. When we catch the turf at 80 miles an hour, that ball jumps in the air and it goes to 170 in the air instead of even 150. So let's give it a shot and see what we got. Give me a little crow, uh, throwing and crunching at the same time. There we go, we got it in the air. And a draw, how about that? <laughs> I didn't hit it that well. Yeah, you missed it a little. Went 142 in the air, so that's good. And that was from a 74 mile an hour, so you didn't go as fast as you as you can. Okay, that's all right. You got an A for effort on that one. So what happened was you got a really nice crunch. You'll see on the video, you crunch nicely, but your throw timing was late. So you did the dip with the shoulder. That's why you at least got under it, got it in the air but you didn't get the pop because the throw was was lagging. So you got a, it's a very quick like drop throw with that shoulder. It happens all very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yep. 
So what happens is that shoulder does a couple things. It lowers you to the ground, but it also helps your path go into out. So if we look at this as three parts, right? There's only three things in golf. Consistency, accuracy, and distance. Consistency of strike, that's your shoulder. Because you gotta hit under the ball, you can't hit the top of it. So we gotta drop the shoulder. The shoulder also helps with accuracy. And then the right arm coming off that shoulder and the left arm whipping through, that's your distance, that's your speed producer. So you have speed whipping in this direction because the shoulder helped you organize, oh, I've got to go that way, right? So do a couple of swings, and as you do that, what you're going to find is now that shoulder really helps the club go over here by the stick. That's what the shoulder's job is. But your hands and arms have to really whip it through and accelerate. Yeah, there you go. Love it. Boom. Yep. And it all happens right from the top. Don't wait till you get to the bottom to try to whip it through. Yeah, that's much better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like what comes first, the shoulder or the throw? Neither. They both happen at the same time. Because the throw down, it actually helps the shoulder go down. Where you've hit a couple of miss hits is where you've thrown down, but the shoulder didn't go with you. The shoulder kind of went around your body. So that's why we're talking about the shoulder now is because I just want you to embrace that when you chuck that energy down, let's make sure that that right rib cage and that shoulder lowers just a little so that now everything kind of goes through together. Yeah, I like it. Nice. Yeah. So what's important for you, because as you rehearse this, I like the repetition. I always say that repetition reveals, right? right? The repetition that you're doing, however, don't do it slow. This is more of a workout today than you expected, right. but but don't, re, don't re, re, do repetitions necessarily slow because then you'll just learn to go slow. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I love those. Go ahead and hit a couple more, and then I want to go back to the driver for a couple. How you feeling? Getting worn out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. There you go. Yep, big, big backswing. Give me a, a good shoulder throw. There you go. Nice. All right, so there's a baby fade. Do uh, Put one on a tee for me, like you're playing a par three. A short T. Yeah, there you go. That one carried 150. That was good. Uh, tee it up a little higher. I want to get a little bit more space under there. Because I want to see you launch that ball in the air. And it's going to jump off the face when you give it that throw. So it's a two handed crunch throw. There you go, that's better. There's our little draw too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you got that one to 80 miles an hour and that was a 146 carry. All right, one more with this, hard as you can. Give me all your speed and I wanna see it hit 150 in the air. A little thin. Uh, we got 81, good. 81 on the club speed. Let's see, distance, there you go. You got a 152 carry, 183 total. <laughs> That's not, are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like 40 yards further than, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, now, like, when you go play golf with your buddies and you tee off and then they outdrive you and you're like, how is that even possible? Yeah, well, I play with a bunch of 80-year-olds. <laughs> they outdrive me and it really pisses me off. Yeah, it should, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So raise those arms up and give me a good hard throw. Down and under. 
problem was you, you got the down part, but, but the throw was late, so you thinned it. So that's how you organize your troubleshooting. If you, t if you thin it and it kind of blades and thins off to the right, your, your hands are slow. Um, if you chunk it or, or hook it, yeah, so in this place over here to the right side, they're not breaking. Like you gotta get them to almost break um, as they scoop through this area. Okay. So when you, um, when you get to here, this wrist needs to have already, once you get to here, it needs to kind of already be kind of in this pushed out position. Okay. Because what happens is if you kind of drag it through here too late and uh -huh. then try to get uh -huh. it. So you might have read or heard or been even taught the whole lag thing. Yeah. It's garbage. It is such garbage. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Not one excellent player is lagging through the ball. There may be a little lag at the top, but they pressure the shaft, and I'll show you why. So do your grip, swing up and stop. Okay, if a golfer lagged, uh -huh. pull your hands down, there would be no flex in the shaft at all. But every great player has flex in the shaft, sure. and I'll show you why. I'll hold this end, uh -huh. you push that end. No, push it out. Try to flex the shaft. No, the other way, there. That's what every great player you see on every picture. Uh, so right. to get this, I'm holding this end. Go ahead and flex it. What do you have to do? Okay, oh, really? What do you have to do? You have to chuck it. Yeah. That's what every great player does. All right, so here. Let me see your club. All right, come and hold right here next to my hand. Up up here where I was holding. Like hold up there. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is what my downswing feels like. I'm pushing, I'm pushing. If I was lagging, that's that's what you would get. Okay. There's no power there. All, right. All the power is in my hand pushing this way. Okay. Right? So if if lag is a thing, it's an extremely misinterpreted, miscoached thing. Right? So if you get that club to the back and your job is to bow that shaft, right? Uh -huh. So here we go. Right, go ahead and bow it there. That's your job, is to bow that shaft so that it kicks and goes wham. Let's try it. Pull it back and then really chuck it. So much better, look at that. Nice high draw. All right, so some of this is new learning. Yes. A lot of it's new learning. This is going to be a challenge to replicate without you standing. <laughs> well, that's why I'm documenting this whole thing in the video, so you get to watch okay. it. Right. right? So we'll put this on YouTube because it's going to be like an hour long. Uh, wow. <laughs> right? Pull it back, pull it back, and then heave it. Flex that shaft. Chuck it. Much better. Right? We got a lot of swings in, so we're getting a little worn out. But part of it, like I was saying there, is new learning. Part of it is unlearning. Yeah, it's, I think it's or, harder for me to unlearn. Yeah. And part of it, too, is um, just misinterpretation, right? Misinformation. Um, you know, dragging, guiding, holding, lagging. Those are what we don't want that. Big, big turns, big early throws. That's what we want. So much better. I mean, that is a nice high draw. It was a little left to target. Right. But gosh, let's and see. And why was that? Look, that one flew 162.5 in the air. Right? 162.5, went total of 183. I'm gonna even normalize it, 159. Right, so that means we have a tiny little, maybe three yard little helping draw wind. Okay. But you can see the flags are kind of moving a little bit that way, right? But <clears throat> if I take that off, it's truly calculated the distance of, that it's going. Uh -huh. And that was from a 75. <clears throat> so if you get that same kind of contact on an 80, yeah. it's going to go even further. Got a little thin, <clears throat> but faster. Yep, 78. So let's finish up with some drives. All right, we've been at this an hour, so we gotta we got to wrap it up. Tee it up real, real high. So what would be 
would you recommend for me to learn new and unlearn old? Yeah, good. So I'm going to ask you the question. <clears throat> After you hit this drive, if we get a good one, we'll, we'll, we'll review and wrap it up. If we don't get a good one, we'll we'll be here all day until we do. <laughs> all right, give me that. Don't do slow motion. Give me up. Give me full speed. All right now, swing back and stop. All right, go back here. All right now, flex that shaft. Yeah, see what you have to do. That right arm has to push out. Even though this left arm is your dominant arm, the right arm hinges and it's so much stronger for that type of movement, all right? All right, one more full speed uh, practice swing and then chuck it. Yep, get your shoulders moving, really wing it. There, wham. All right, now let's try that with the ball. Back up just a little. Yeah, there you go. Yep, give me a big aggressive throws. Yeah, we towed it. We'll try another one. The reason why we hit that off the toe is you kind of you threw and then guided all at the same time. Uh -huh. It was almost like you knew you were going to throw it hard, but you were worried it wasn't going to go straight. Right. But as long as this ball lands somewhere on planet Earth, you're succeeding. So just just go for it. Nice. All right, we're gonna get one more better than that before we wrap it up. 240 drive, it's good. I added loft to this driver. So let's use the shoulder to give us a little more loft. Really crank it out there. Oh yeah, we'll end on that one. There you go. Very nicely done, right? So here. Uh, we didn't get a club at speed number because the track man, we must have been outside the radar there, but we got a 257 drive. Okay. Right? It carried all the way to 204. Okay. All right? Your, your previous drives were 220 total. All right? So now we've gone up in that 35 range. So here, you asked a really good question. What do I, what do I need to do to learn and unlearn? I'm going to ask you, what is their biggest takeaway? My biggest takeaway is trying to get the to snap the club way back here yeah. rather than here. Yeah. So here, let's grab that stick off the ground and we'll go back to where we started. Right, left and right-handed. Do one hand, one hand at a time. So do your left hand. See, it's back there. Right. And this is clearly something you've never done before. Yeah. Right. But now we hear it. So your, there you go, that's it. All right, now do it right-handed, because actually what you're gonna find is the right hand's easier to do, because it's on the right side of you. Yeah. And actually when you were weed whacking and chopping weeds over there, your left-handed throw was really good. <laughs> so there may be a switch hitter future for you. Well, I did that in baseball. My dad was a very good baseball player. Uh, I was horrible. <laughs> he taught me to switch it. Yeah, good. All right, so that's a, that's one big takeaway. What else? What do you think? Um, I think, um, well, just kind of getting it high. Yeah. And I'll naturally finish more high. Yeah. And that's good. And then I think... Um, talked about the alignment of like where track. where to throw yeah. it yeah where to throw it yeah because i think i don't know i may be i may have been trying to come more yeah there you go and i need to go more out yeah back. yeah yeah so so what was happening in your in so the unlearning part um, you were doing a lot of, I call it handcuffing, right? So you're guiding, directing, manipulating, maneuvering the club. You were trying to solve a follow-through collision problem with a backswing movement. So you, you were learning and you were taught to guide the club and pull it inside and guide it back and then guide it through. And it did, it changed the path. But the problem was there was no zip to it. So there's a better way to create the path. So now what we're doing is we're solving a downswing path problem with a downswing path solution. Okay. The backswing, all the backswing does is prep you for that throw. 
and we talked a little bit about like where where do you get to like a john daly wraps it up over his head a yeah. john rom holds it short yeah. but if you look at both of their tony golf Finau. shafts yeah tony Finau, same thing right especially the guys that load it short like a rom and a Finau, their shaft just flexes hard right here because they're grabbing it and they're chucking that head right back out you can't get shaft flex by pulling the handle down Right. I, I see. You, you see the, the difference? Yeah. yeah, right? Throwing the head rather than pull the handle. Yeah, and so what happens is for John Daly, he tips the club way over here. So where he throws it is he actually is kind of throwing it in this arc over here. Whereas those shorter hitter, shorter swingers, I should say, are kind of pressuring it more here. But it's all for the purpose of pressuring it down into the ground. So that's where the height's going to come from. You pull your arm up high and then you load that shaft and that's throw right. it here. Right. The, the second half of that is got to be ready to let it go. <clears throat> because some of your pulls early on were, was residual pulls right. because you had it in a little in backswing and you had a little in follow through. Uh -huh. So sometimes even as good as you chucked it down here, you tucked it. So I don't want you to chuck it in, tuck it in. I want you to throw it and let it go. So that's going to be a much longer arm swing. Right. Okay. Um, couple things. I did adjust your seven iron. We'll kind of leave that as a guinea pig club. Um, I want you to go back. It was only two degrees, but if you go back and forth, say between a seven and an eight, uh -huh and you start noticing that the seven iron just reacts better, Feels better. we can adjust those okay. and anybody here can help you adjust those clubs um when we get back together again which really should be pretty soon yeah. um we're going to continue this we want to continue yeah. this throwing motion and so your job in between times is to i'm going to uh, recommend you get one of my training tools it's a saber because okay more of your swishing and swinging probably needs to be done at home than on the driving range okay because i want kind of reckless free swinging swishing right. and what happens when you try to do that on the range is you get tied into accuracy uh -huh. and you don't actually commit to strong throws right. if you're swinging in the living room or the garage or backyard uh -huh. you're going to commit to more aggressive throws okay. and you're going to get your throwing muscles worked out and exercised it's going to feel great uh -huh. and you're going to develop more speed swinging a training tool than a club okay um where do i get that uh, i'll get you one we've got them in the in the golf shop okay and we're gonna to have to do putting another time okay that's fine <laughs> um how long are you here this season yeah i'll be here um all the way till we shut down which is usually november 1st oh till november yeah. oh yeah. okay that's wonderful yeah I was, yeah i saw the thing on the calendar that oh, yeah. said the official closing date of September <laughs> starts, and i knew we were redoing yeah, yeah. the range but it's like right we are going to do the right redo the range we're going to make it awesome um but we'll still be able to have the ability to hit balls um, in a netted area like a warm-up area okay. and then we'll be able to take this on the course which is just going to be so much better because right. You, this is this is just the beginning of the mind game right. <laughs> of right. golf. Right. You just learn that you're capable of hitting the ball 40 yards further. Right. The question is now, down a fairway with native grass left and right, water hazards, houses, are you able to unleash that? Right. So that progression is taking this, uh -huh. watching the video over again, logging it in your brain going okay i get it i'm bought in i see it the results are right there you can see the ball flight you can feel it then it's going to be a case of putting that swing in training so that's where the saber is going to come in uh -huh. and then we got to get this on the course because right. the way this thing will completely backfire is if you get out there and start guiding it again because right. then you'll take your distances from 160 to yeah, all really the way back down while because i'm not going to well am i going to hit it <laughs> yeah I'm gonna hit my 9 125 no. or 165 it's going to be a it's going to be a fantastic chart for me to create i love taking people's charts and crunching it up throwing it in the trash uh -huh. and creating a whole new one that says your driver goes 260 right your uh -huh. seven iron's going to go 160 ish Right, and then your nine iron instead of landing in that one ten, it's going to land in the one thirty five range. Uh -huh. So those are going to be that's going to be good stuff for us to do. Okay, good, good work. What's the uh, in terms of your experience?